Hey YouTube, Jason here, and welcome back to the video side of Linux for Everyone. Excuse me while I have a sip of my, uh... Hey everybody, thank you for being here. My name is Jason Evangelo, Forbes tech writer and host of the Linux for Everyone podcast. And today... I want to give you an introduction to gaming on elementary OS. We're going to explore what you need to get up and running with stuff like Steam Play and Lutris and getting Wine installed and checking your drivers and some of the hiccups that you might experience along the way that might throw you for a loop. So without any more delay, let's get into it. All right, so in this video, I'm going to be using Elementary OS 5.1, which is built on Ubuntu LTS. So this is pulling from the uh, the base of Ubuntu 18.04.3. It ships with the Linux 5.0 kernel. And let's talk about the hardware really briefly. Uh, I could spend an hour talking about this hardware, but uh, this is a Falcon Northwest Talon. And this thing is loaded up with a Ryzen 9 3900X 12-core processor, dual NVIDIA RTX 2080 supers, 32 gigs of memory. So the goal for this guide is, is basically to get you completely ready for any kind of gaming situation that you want to throw on elementary OS, whether that is native gaming, whether that is Steam Proton Gaming, and that is um, being able to install and run uh, literally thousands of Windows-only games that are on Steam on Linux. Proton has come such a long way since it was released in about mid-2018, so we're going to get set up with that. We're going to make sure that our drivers are all up to spec, that we have Wine installed. Uh, we're going to install Lutris. So let me show you how to get to the NVIDIA information. On Elementary OS, you can hit your super key and space to search, and then you can type NVIDIA and you'll see NVIDIA X server settings. Okay, so that's going to show you that your NVIDIA driver is 435.21, which is really modern enough. It's, uh, it's only a few months old. It's recent enough to do anything you want to do with it. And you can double check that by going into the App Center and then clicking the Installed tab. And you'll see here that you could install, uh, you could kind of roll back to NVIDIA 430, but you'll see here that NVIDIA 435 is installed. If you want to actually triple check that um, elementary OS is using your NVIDIA GPU to drive the display, go ahead and click Super T to open up your terminal and type NVIDIA-SMI. And if this screen comes up at all, that means success. If it doesn't, you're gonna get a message saying that it could not communicate with the NVIDIA driver and to make sure that it's installed. All right, so let's start really basic and we will work our way a little more into the weeds as we go. So you have your driver ready to go. The first thing you wanna do is probably install Steam because that's where a lot of the games are and that's where you have access to a ton of great native Linux games and also Windows games that you can play through Proton. So. Let's get Steam installed. So we fire up the App Center and just type Steam. And you'll notice perhaps confusingly that there are three options for Steam here. That's because before I started this video, I installed OBS from flathub.org. And once you install your first flat pack on elementary OS, it adds all of the other applications that are available on flathub.org. So it can get kind of uh, confusing but I can tell you that you either want the Steam installer or you want just Steam. And that's not the right Steam. It's going to be this Steam. So this is why I use the terminal to avoid any confusion. Um, if you fire up your terminal, super T, just type sudo apt install Steam. And this is going to pull the Steam package that your distribution provides. In this case, it's coming from Ubuntu. So that's going to just alleviate any confusion. This is the package that you want. Hit enter, type your password, and confirm. 
and we have Steam installed. So super space to launch your app menu, hit Steam, and fire it up. And I'm just going to drag this into my favorites here so that we don't have to search for it again. Now, if all you want to do is just play some native Linux games on Steam, you're done. You can just skip the rest of the video, although it'd be, it'd be cool if you watch the whole thing because the YouTube algorithm, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you might also get some cool tips along the way. But uh, yeah, that's all you have to do. But we've got the power of Proton at our disposal. So let's go into our Steam settings and then go down here to Steam Play. And you'll see it says you can use Steam Play to test games in your library that have not been verified with a supported compatibility tool. And what that's basically saying is, hey, here at Valve, we've whitelisted about, I don't know, 40, 50 or so games that we know are going to be rock solid with the Proton compatibility tool. But there's, there's also like literally thousands of other games that you can play very, very smoothly that exist just on Windows. So we are going to enable Steam Play for all other titles. This is what you want here, but if you have trouble with certain games, if you have trouble launching certain Windows games here, you can um, go into the game itself so let's look at, uh, let's see, what's one that I recently did that needed kind of a different version? Um, I don't know, just for, so let's look at Far Cry 5. Down here, under the properties in general, you can force the use of a specific Steam compatibility tool. And you can try, I would try uh, the most recent two if, if you're having any trouble. Now, something that is important to understand is there are tens of thousands of games on Steam. And just because you're running Proton as that compatibility layer doesn't mean every game is going to work. But you do have another tool in your arsenal. So don't go clicking around your library and <laughs> cause yourself massive headaches experimenting with each game. The best approach is is to visit protondb.com and search for the game that you want to run. So let's just say it's Monster Hunter World. Just search for it on protondb.com, hit the result, and you're going to see here there's 295 reports so far, and it's rated silver, so that means it's it's going to work, but it's not going to work perfectly. There might be artifacting. There might be performance problems. You might have situations where maybe the uh, intro movies or the cutscenes don't play. But these reports are nice because there's often so much additional information here that will help you get the game up and running as best as possible. So right off the bat, you can look at what's the most popular, and a few of these are native Linux games, but you do see several uh, Windows-exclusive titles here. But if you really want to dig in, you can click Explore, and here is where ProtonDB gets amazing. See this over here? Sign in through Steam. So if you don't want to use ProtonDB to search individually for every single game, just load up your Steam library. And now you can explore your own Steam library via ProtonDB and check out the compatibility ratings with uh, common tags that are used in the games you own by rating. So let's do ProtonDB rating. So this is a great way to see what you can just immediately jump into and start enjoying. I highly recommend Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, by the way. Uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. I think I think we're gonna play that on a uh, DLN game night in the near future. But anyway, you see how this can be really useful. So let's go back and you can look at by your hours played, by the Steam DB user score, by player count, all kinds of really interesting. Uh, let's say let's click the adventure tag and see what we've got. Castle Crashers, Far Cry Five, No Man's Sky, Destiny Two. That's that's bad news on Linux. 
Final Fantasy XIV. So as you can see, I, I have a lot of games that I can just jump into on Linux and start playing. So ProtonDB.com, make it your friend alongside Steam Proton on your Linux rig. So if Steam is not quite enough to satisfy all your gaming needs, you might want to look at something called Lutris. You can find it at Lutris.net, and I have a hard time describing Lutris. It's kind of magical to me. I'm sure that for developers and people who understand what's happening behind the scenes, it's very transparent and straightforward. What Lutris does is, uh, for every game in their library, they have a custom install script. And what this script is, is something that holds a lot of optimizations for things like wine and wine tricks, so that you can have the, the best possible compatibility experience with that native Windows game that you want to play on Linux. I'll work on that description, but that's what I'm going with for now. Now, in certain distributions, uh, it's very easy to find and install Lutris. On Pop! OS, for example, it's right in the Pop! Shop. You just click Install, and you're good to go. For a lot of other distributions, it involves adding a repository and then installing it from the command line. It's not necessarily difficult, but there is a potential showstopper for you if you're on elementary. If you haven't added a lot of software on elementary before, let me, let me show you what happens. So to get Lutris, first you have to add a third-party repository, and that is done right here. And as you can see, this is for Ubuntu, Elementary, Linux, Mint, and not really for Pop! OS anymore since it's in the store. So let's just copy this and switch over to our command line. Whoops. Now, watch this. I'm typing my password. What? <laughs> this, this throws people for a loop with elementary, and it threw me for a loop the first time. I had to search for what the heck is going on. Elementary does not have the ability to add third-party repositories enabled. You can do that, and it doesn't. it's not a huge headache, but it is something you have to do. It is an extra step, and here's how you do it. You have to install software properties common. What? Oh, <laughs> you have to type sudo apt install software properties common. Now, once that's done, watch. Now, we'll just click. Let's go ahead and actually clear the screen. Let's click our up arrow to scroll through previous commands. And there is the add repository command. Hit enter, and we're done. Now, we just update so that elementary is aware of the additional packages that it can install. And sudo apt install Lutris. So is installing Lutris all you need to do? Not quite. In most cases, there's going to be a couple extra steps which involve installing Wine. Wine, of course, is the secret sauce, the compatibility layer that makes all of this Windows gaming on Linux possible. Now, you might be asking, but wait, don't I have Wine installed because I have Steam installed and I'm, I'm running Proton games now? I'm, I'm running those Windows games with Proton. Well, Proton incorporates Wine, but my understanding is that it does not install Wine system-wide. So we're going to need to install Wine proper system-wide on our elementary OS installation. Now, if you go to Lutris.net slash downloads, you'll see that they say, if you plan on playing games for Windows to ensure a smooth experience, install a recent version of Wine on your system. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's just follow this link. And we see Ubuntu WineHQ binary packages. That's what we're gonna go for. 
because elementary is based on Ubuntu, so it uses the Ubuntu base. And we're just going to follow these instructions from the very top. So first, we are going to enable 32-bit architecture on our system. That's done. Next, we're going to add their repository key before we add the repository itself. And this shouldn't be a problem because we have adding repositories now. That's, that's a, a thing we can do now after we installed uh, Software Properties Common. Okay, and now we will add the WineHQ key. And we're going to do the Ubuntu 18.04 instructions because elementary is based on Ubuntu LTS. So plug that in, boom, so far so good, and we'll just run a sudo apt update again, clear the screen, wait, what, clear the screen, <laughs> and now let's install staging and fingers crossed, fingers crossed, this will work. Uh-oh. <laughs> why, God, why? Wine HQ staging depends on wine staging. I'm so confused. All right, what if we... install wine stable? Let's do that. I actually do not know how to resolve this issue, and I didn't think it would come up, but uh, this is, you know, part of the learning experience. And I do, not, uh, I do not claim to be any kind of Linux expert. I'm just kind of in the trenches with you guys, learning all of the, the little nuances as I go here. So with WineStable installed, let's see if we can fire up Lutris. Superspace. Bring up the menu. Missing Vulcan Libraries. I don't believe them. <laughs> and here's why. For starters, I'm running NVIDIA, and NVIDIA includes the Vulcan Libraries in the driver, and I am able to launch something like, let's see, something like Doom. Let's see if this works. Okay, OpenGL. Let's switch to Vulkan. And yeah, figured we'd have to restart, so let's restart it real fast. Yep, I am not seeing an issue with Vulkan, gang. Bye. I might just play this for a while if you guys don't mind. I never actually finished this game. I've done a bit on arcade mode, but uh, never finished the game proper. Oh, get over there. Okay, no, I can't do this. We, we, we're trying to make a video here. Maybe this is some kind of false flag. Just to make sure, let's click on their help link and ensure that we've done everything. Okay. Now, I know that our graphics driver is installed. I know that we added 32-bit architecture. We have uh, a newer driver than this, so that's not an issue. And this might be the only outstanding thing that I haven't manually done. So I'm just going to plug this in and see what happens. Hmm, interesting. Okay, okay. So libvulkan1 and libvulkan1 i386 are now installed. Now, 
I am not trying to bash elementary. Elementary is currently my daily driver. That may change in the future. But I have a lot of experience with Pop! OS. And this is, this is one of those minor touches that System76 does to kind of ease that user friction, you know, make it easier for gamers. So when you install Steam on Pop! OS, Pop! OS automatically includes what we just installed. So it's just one less minor step. But elementary is beautiful and I love the workflow and I'm really stuck on it right now. So that's why I'm doing videos about it. Okay, so we have solved all the problems. We've enabled repositories. We have installed Wine. We have installed Lutris. We have enabled 32-bit architecture and we've installed those missing Vulkan libraries. So let's not display this message again. I do support Lutris. Thank you, Lutris, for everything you guys do. My first go-to thing is probably going to be Battle.net. So a Battle.net game would be Overwatch. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So let's type in Overwatch. And install. Run execute script to get rid of stutters after game updates. Ah, that's cool. Uh-oh, it looks like there might be more instructions for battle.net friendly functionality. <laughs> you know what? We're just going to try. Okay, we're going to try. Standard and we've got Chinese and manual. Okay, so let's do the standard install. And you'll get a lot of prompts about why needing to install additional packages those are all okay and necessary to install. Now it's gonna install some fonts and probably some .NET stuff and uh, just everything that it needs to enable that full Windows gaming compatibility. And it'll do this on a per game basis. You might not always have to uh, install all those additional wine packages. Hey, that looks familiar, doesn't it? Let's launch it. And let's hope I remember my password. And there we go, we've got battle.net. So let's install StarCraft 2. Keep it updated automatically, yes, love it. And here we go. So I'll be right back after this is finished. With the artifact secure, you need to wait for transport at backwaters. So far, so good. Transport coming to pick us up. All we gotta do is sit tight. No oh, man. Not sure if all the textures are loading in, but that that could be just the fact that it's not completely downloaded yet. Huh? Yeah, looking looking good. It's running. Very very cool. I don't even remember how to play this game, but anyway, it works. I think I'm going to cap this video right here before it gets any longer and um, and messier. <laughs> if you've reached this point, thank you for enduring. This, this video, I started shooting it, I, I don't know, uh, three, four weeks ago, and it's been a little bit of a rocky production process. Uh, I started learning Lightworks on Linux, and so I have I've been forcing myself to do this entire video using Lightworks, and so it's been a learning process, and it's been a bit of a relief too, because this is the first um, video editing software that has actually clicked with me on Linux and that hasn't crashed, and that has just been like from from the workflow to the stability to the features, it's just been amazing. So thanks for your patience, and uh, I hope that you learned a little something along the way. Like I said, I, I don't really do notes for videos like this, <laughs> and it's just uh, it's just me and you kind of going through it together and uh, fighting our way through whatever whatever hiccups and roadblocks that come up. 
Anyway, if you enjoyed this and you want to see future videos about all things desktop Linux, please click that subscribe button and that'll get you both the Linux for Everyone podcast and future videos like this under one roof. So until we talk again, which will be very soon, take care and take care of each other. Oh, hi, YouTube. Jason here. So, uh, oh man, I can't even do that with a straight face.